What's going on everybody? It's Ricky with Video Homicide back with a couple of uh, movie recommendations. Also some of my own personal history with two of the most iconic horror franchises in my personal life. But before we get into that, I want to quickly plug Cinema 187 Issue 6 is uh, still in the process of collecting submissions. If you want to submit, please do so before September 1st. Currently, you have 13 days. Uh, if you want to order any of the previously existing issues, please message me at cinema.187 on Instagram, and I will get you sorted out from there. But today, where the fuck did I put them? Jesus Christ. Oh, there they are. Uh, today, I want to talk about two horror icons. Now, franchises are uh, types of um, or franchise slashers, if you want to call them that. They're the types of films that I kind of lean towards the least now, but when I was a kid, I was all about Child's Play. I was all about Leprechaun, man. Like, these movies are fucking awesome. I know a lot of people have, you know, shit to say about Leprechaun, but fuck all that. I think Sleepaway Camp is ass. I think Puppet Master is ass. So, anyone that makes fun of mine, I'll make fun of theirs, okay? So, but that's what makes being a fanatic of this shit so much fun because you get to have that banter like famously me and retro or die uh you know he loves army of darkness i don't and we have that banter and that's what makes this shit fun it's not a competition it's just strictly you know it's what you were raised on if you were raised on army of darkness you're gonna like that more than fucking leprechaun and child's play but this is my bread and butter when i was a kid even more so than uh halloween friday the 13th Nightmare on Elm Street, all that stuff. That stuff, I felt, was much more hardcore. I felt these movies had a bit of uh, heart. And e even though the first one, I think, is a straight-up, like, you know, like, there's a few funny moments in this film, but I think they're all... They're funny in a way, but they're not, if you know what I mean. Like, when Chucky, like, first kind of comes onto screen and uh, he surprises his friend John, the guy that taught him all the voodoo... That scene is not fucking funny when you're a kid, you know what I mean? And it isn't really funny now when I watch it because it's so implanted in my head. It's like, this is fucked up. This is his, you know, he basically made this mess and now it's killing him. I always thought of that. That's my standout scene in this film. I think it's fantastic. Uh, with Child's Play, the the opening scene with like, uh, you know, the, uh, the chase sequence between Chris Sarandon's character and, uh, you know, Charles Lee Ray, the notorious Lakeshore Strangler, in the toy store all if that movie like you know didn't take the supernatural twist i think you'd still have a fucking solid film 100 percent, man because uh brad Dourif, an amazing actor recently watched him in exorcist 3 there's a review up if you want to check that out but it like th this movie it because it, it's so ridiculous when you think about it but if you look at it like like if this is real it's so fucked up you know because especially if you're you know into like voodoo type stuff or any kind of uh spiritual stuff like there's there's a, a sense of like this could happen type shit happening in your head so i don't know man i think that one of the most terrifying things that could happen to you is be trapped in the body of a doll but this movie <sighs> holds a place in my heart because i can remember sitting there on the fucking couch with my cousin fur and uh shout out to my homie to my cousin chris uh i call him fur but uh, we would watch movies, like, we'd watch all these movies back to back, and I can just remember, you know, some movies pretending to like, but really being scared shitless, like, both of us were with Halloween, you know, the fucking music gave him nightmares, and we lived in an apartment building, and I'm, this is no bullshit, I can, I don't know if it was a nightmare or if it actually fucking happened, but... I remember looking out the apartment window, we were on the second floor, and I remember like seeing guys standing, I think he was just standing there having a cigarette, but like he wasn't looking at the window, but I remember just like looking out the window and seeing that and being like, oh fuck, I'm just a little, I'm just a little guy, you know, and it, certain scenes like that just stood out to me, man, and like with Child's Play, that scene where, uh, you know, he's climbing up the, the emergency staircase or whatever it was of that hospital, and it was clearly an actor in a suit, but it's fucked up, man. And the whole ritual, the ade do a dambala. I think everyone my age knows that fucking thing, like by line. But uh, of course, I wasn't around to see the original three films coming out as they came out. But Bride of Chucky, I was around for. Everything after that, I was around. I've seen everything un un except for the show. I have not watched the show. I probably will never watch the show. Uh, I do think all the films are enjoyable in one way or another. Obviously, the first, I think, five you know those are the best ones people talk their shit about five but five is ridiculous it's so fucking out of control it's it's very much made for people that are uh 
you know, aware of just silly stuff. John Waters for like, that was my exposure to John Waters, you know? And then fucking not long after that, my uncle, my grandpa, I've told this story before, but I'll say it again real quick. Uh, my uncle Mike, total movie fanatic, like even more than me, even more than most people on the internet. And all he did it all without the internet, which is fucking insane. But Pink Flamingos is a tape that he had in the basement because he had all of his movies in the basement at my grandpa's pad. And one day my grandpa was just like, we go over there to visit him. He's laughing his ass off. He's like, I have a movie you guys have to watch. So it's me, my mom, my kid brother, who's probably like seven or eight or some shit like that. He's like, this movie's called Pink Flamingos pushed in the tape and the rest is history i thought i'd seen it all you know i was a young kid and i prided myself on being like yeah i've, I've seen clockwork orange i've seen heavy metal you know i'm starting to know who people like lucio fulci are all that, that kind of shit and then no you don't know shit kid here's fucking pink flamingos boom everything from eating dog shit to hide and stay i think that the scene of eating dog shit is like the like the most tame scene you know like some of that stuff is out of control the egg lady I want my eggs. I'm going to marry the egg man. I'm going to marry the egg man. And like, uh, that chick was also the, the egg lady, whatever her fucking name was. She was in another John Waters flick that I watched recently and did a video on, I forget the name of it. it might've been multiple maniacs or femme fatale or one of those. Maybe I may, might not have been femme fatale. I don't think I've seen that yet. But anyways, uh, I don't know how that all wrapped into child's play, but you get the idea. All right. This stuff that's what makes it so fun everyone's personal history with it is different and it makes it interesting you find out about a person more i think so let's check out or let's talk about leprechaun oh i forgot to mention that child's play was i think what 1988 1988 directed by tom holland who i think also did fright night uh written by don mancini so now we've got leprechaun from i believe 1993 so a year after i was born Written and directed by Mark Jones. Okay. So, Leprechaun is a movie that I can specifically remember when it came into my life. I remember uh, my dad, my mom and my dad separated and all that shit. But my dad would come, you know, my, my dad was present in my life. Okay. But I remember one time he, he bought two movies at the same time. Because, you know, we'd go to pawn shops. We'd go to thrift stores, flea markets, all that stuff. You could get VHS for fucking dirt cheap at the time. Like, you could get the coolest stuff for dirt cheap. $1.99, blah, blah, blah. People were making way for this new format called DVD. He brings home Leprechaun on VHS, which I still have the, the exact copy on the wall here somewhere. And he also brings uh, Clown House, which is a screener copy. Now, the reason I point that out is because when I was a kid, my dad had me convinced that it was illegal to own that. And it was, every time we watched it, he was like... We could be facing time in federal fucking prison. He was pulling the whole Dana White thing. You know what I mean? But uh, it wasn't until years later that I found out the fucking nasty truth behind that film. But I, I still love the movie. But he brought home Clown House and Leprechaun at the same time. And I remember double featuring those. So it was still fresh in my mind, right? And I remember like this, like the, the cover alone of Leprechaun is, tr is, is trippy with this, you know, this guy, this fucked up Leprechaun face thing. Like a Leprechaun to me, like, I it, it was so early in my life that... Oh, I gotta sneeze, I'm sorry. <clears throat> it was so early in my life that I don't remember who I found out about first. The Lucky Charms Leprechaun or the Leprechaun from the film. And I remember there was kids at school that knew about Leprechaun. There was kids at school that knew about Chucky and stuff like that. And so it was cool to kind of be like, have you seen Leprechaun? You know, like now you ask questions like, so did you see, have you seen fucking Deep Red? Have you seen whatever? Have you seen Maniac with Joe Spinell? No, it was like, have you seen Leprechaun? And the, the few people that did, they knew, you know, they knew it was up. This movie, although silly, has some scary fucking moments in it. The scene where he rips the guy's eyeball out and puts it in his own eye and he goes an eye for an eye. Kind of, kind of rem, uh, rip off or it's kind of, it kind of get, kind of gets ripped off. In Jeepers Creepers uh, with the whole fucking replacing of organs and stuff like that. But amazing performance by Warwick Davis. He's fucking spot on. Also, Brad Dourif, if I didn't shout him out in this film, Brad Dourif is the absolute fucking man. He's the OG. And, and even now, like, I still watch this and I still get goosebumps when he's like, uh, I'm going to get you and Eddie no matter what. Like, it's such like a fucking it echoes in my mind you know i know the layout of the clouds that form above the place and all that shit i think that's with a lot of people but basically leprechaun is one that we watched a lot and 
I knew there were sequels because I had a tape that we bought. I think I still have it, to be honest with you. Um, I don't think it was. Let me see here. Uh, shit. No, I don't see it. There's a chance it could be somewhere else in the place, but I don't want to put any hopes up. But Leprechaun 2, I think, was on it. It might have actually been Leprechaun 3. But the thing I remember the most about it is, like, he has that kind of underground lair. So whatever movie that was where he had that little underground-y lair thing, that was the one. But uh, I think it was tape. Well, my dad didn't tape. My dad knows how to fucking tape a tape. Like, he'll take the, the commercials out and everything. But if it's on TV, that is. But anyways... Uh, I, I never really seen the sequels of that film until later on. And then, you know, it wasn't even until probably Leprechaun in the Hood is when I first found out that those were like the fifth and sixth sequels. You know what I mean? I didn't know he went to space. You know, I'm pretty sure I didn't know that he uh, went to Vegas. Maybe I did. I don't know. It's it's all kind of a blur because it wasn't until I was like after high school when I when I when I've seen them all, you know what I mean? Like with both franchises, I've seen all the Freddies, all the Leprechauns. And all the Leprechauns have their have their moments once again, but for me the first one is the only one that you really need to see. You know, if you want to see Warwick Day, it's like the progression kind of goes like Freddy Krueger where like his his one-liners get more and more ridiculous. The one film might have been the second one he like rhymes everything, which Eh, don't really care about that. What I do care about is him getting in that fucking little uh, car with the fucking stuffed animal. He gets pulled over by the cop and then to torments the cop all throughout the woods. You know, he fucks that guy up. He jumps on the guy with the jumping fucking jack. What's that thing called? Pogo stick? He's like, he, this old man, he had fun. He played pogo on his lung. Like, on his lung? You're playing pogo on this guy's fucking lungs? That is fucked up for a kid to hear, you know? A lot of the stuff in these movies was fucked up, but who cares, man? It's what made us awesome. It's what made our parents awesome. They let us fucking live, you know? We didn't have leashes on us when we were kids. We had fucking, you know, come back when the lights came on and no one ever fucking did. And everyone, you know, people's... My mom would fucking call my friends. Fucking mom would call people. Oh, is Ricky there? Blah, blah, blah. It's, how, it's what happened. We were out watching Dawn of the Dead remake, you know? We didn't ask for permission to do this stuff. A lot of the times it was like our parents or whoever the fuck was in charge of us would be like, hey, let's go and rent a movie. And of course, you're going to rent something that's something crazy. You know, it's, it's how I first found out about a lot of stuff was through rentals and shit like that. And not only that, but shout out to my dad, shout out to my Uncle Mike, shout out to my, my Aunt Chris. My Aunt Chris is one that I don't mention enough of, but she was instrumental in my horror cinema education, especially at a young age. She's the one that first popped in Halloween 1 and 2. And I have that fucking tape right here. Ba, 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 ba. Halloween 1 and 2 in my aunt's fucking writing. There it is, man. That is a fucking good tape right there. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of history on these shelves, especially when it comes to the bootleg stuff. I think that's with everybody. Like, I don't know if I told this before, but my dad, he threw out a bunch of fucking stuff. Like in the last couple of years, he threw out all the taped WWF stuff. All every episode of Gilligan's Island taped off the Superstation, threw him out. And I'm like, dude, you just fucking committed a cardinal sin. And you just disrespected your son. But hopefully we can get past that. So I really just wanted to touch base, talk about a couple of my favorite films, and just really, you know, go back to the roots of why it is that I love this stuff. I, I don't want to just end it with this. I want to talk about books and comics and stuff like that. But, you know, I know this isn't exactly Cannibal Holocaust or fucking, uh, you know, City of the Living Dead or anything like that. But these are the movies that I've seen way before that. This is the stuff that, you know, laid down the, the, the groundwork for me to becoming a fan of some of this other stuff. Because I think if, if I was just raised on Adam Sandler films, I would think that Adam Sandler films were the best. You know, and I like Adam Sandler. I just watched the Joe Rogan, Adam Sandler thing. It was pretty entertaining. Uh, I, I like Adam Sandler more as a person than I do as a movie star. Like when it comes to his films, my favorite one that he's done was probably, uh, shit. I don't fucking know. Maybe, I, I'm, I'd like to say Billy Madison, but Big Daddy was the one that I remember seeing the most. And that one kind of has heart to it. You know, when he's just going like, I like you, don't you like that shit, it, it does nothing for me. So maybe my favorite Adam Sandler film is uh, Shakes the Clown. So anybody, anyways, if anybody wants to get a hold of me, 
get get any copies of this zine cinema 187 message me at cinema.187 on instagram with that being said hopefully everyone has a fantastic rest of your week uh i actually had monday off because i was up at a cottage this weekend so we had a good fucking time and uh it's my uh, wife's birthday this week so love her to pieces love you baby hopefully you're watching this till the end leave a 666 in the comments and with that being said adios Yeah. <laughs>